fuel the jet and leave it running. Because oh. the second I'm finished talking Damn. to peers, I'm leaving this cesspit. It's disgusting. <laughs> uh, There's something called choice of words. My man has none of it. I'm going to regret reacting to this. But hey, I'm already here. So let's go. Why am I reacting to this? I, I you know, let's go views. Some, but, sure, right? Do you think women are the property of men? No. But the point I was why, making. Why have you said they are? Because I made a religious point. Authority implies that you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In terms of his mindset, he got his mindset you on the, the right place. To control someone. No, right? authority believes. Uh, the authority implies that I have the moral right to sit. Now, if you say something crazy, hey. 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 I would say the first thing you need to do is stop accepting the identity of a clinically depressed person. Stop accepting you have no control over this. Andrew, you're simply wrong. If that's what you believe, Piers. That's what I believe. I don't believe in things that take power away. There from. is not an eminent doctor in the world Pierce, who would agree with Pierce, you. Piers. I you think you know more than doctors. I can't become clinically depressed. Why do you know? Because I don't believe in it. In terms of, like, depression and all of that, like... I was raised in Africa. That already, in terms of depressions and all of that, like on my time, that didn't exist. Like probably existed, but we did not know what that even is. Everybody was just trying to fight for survival or even that, like even the richest person in the country didn't have depression. They didn't have crap. They were just working. They have the money. They were going several countries they were traveling like they were always good the word depression only existed in my brain when i actually traveled outside of africa so after i went to europe i learned that depression was a word and then i learned what depression was and then i was always asking myself why do people have this like don't people have better things to do or more issues to than actual being depressed or Having depression, because being depressed and having depression is two different things. Now I know. But before, it's like, why are they just get yourself up and do something? Like, <laughs> that's that's what we do. Like, we have to do something about it. Like, we don't just, you know, sit there and be sad about it. Well, Andrew Tate joins me again. Now, Andrew, good to see you. Salam yes. alaikum, Pierce. Good to see you. I've, I've genuinely been... Salam Young men who genuinely see you as a role model, as somebody who inspires them, as somebody they want to be like. I don't actually watch Andrew. I don't do anything. I don't follow him. I I just, the man appears everywhere, okay? You, ha you will see his face no matter the hell what. You will hear certain things that he will say. There are certain reviews that I saw Andrew and it was pretty tamed and pretty normal compared to the videos that they freaking spread out obviously he does say some crazy stuff but it's literally just because of views and all of that so at that point i don't judge you, you from saying I another mean, day it's, like we live in a world of social media so you have time, to say whatever uh, the hell you have to, to say so. i want to try and work out as long as it's not as crazy as whatever because the hell. It struck me as extraordinary that google this week revealed some stats for the year the number one person whose name followed people Google searching who is in 2022 was Andrew Tate. Yeah, that's quite remarkable. I think there's a whole swath of really, especially young men that feel disenfranchised. And he was smiling. They Have you seen that? He was smiling. Media machine and the things because he, they he wants that. He wants to with achieve the educational that. systems or the culture. And they look at a person like me who stands up and says the things that many young men think. I haven't put a magic spell on the world. The fact that people like what I say means that they agree with me deep inside. They may be afraid to say it themselves, but I am seen as a bastion of free speech and a bastion, bastion for masculinity as a whole. Because That's a also one thing, like, forgotten about. a lot of people a don't say certain things and they evolution, they just basically bottled up inside and they, when they see Andrew Tate saying that, some people say, oh, yes, I wanted to say that. And other people say, oh, you can't say that. So it's like... A responsibility perhaps bro i came from africa on. so my well, we opinion evolved. is going to be Every completely different from you guys day. like i think andrew tate an is pretty basis, much a guy that was raised in africa no in my opinion like he has truth. the same attitude as and every african guy <laughs> that was raised and born there. nice isolation was the beginning of a change in public consciousness elon having twitter is another beginning of the change in public consciousness and anybody who stands up and speaks what they truly believe even if it's something I don't personally agree with, I think that truth is absolutely important. And people's personal truths and people's personal opinions, even on differing sides of the same opinion, should be heard. Tell me about your life. You were born to a mixed race, 
uh, couple. Your yeah. father was an African American, a chess player. Yeah. Uh, and your mother, she was from this country. Hmm. Correct. Yeah. So my father was was black chess player. He was in the Air Force. He met my mother here in England, and then chess. I was raised hmm. initially in the United States, and then I moved. So to my man is black. That that younger. explains a lot. So I've huh? moved around a lot. <laughs> I've lived a that expi- eclectic Whoa. life in many different scenarios. We've moved around. I've done a lot of different things. Why are you guys so white then? Sorry. I'm Thank you for it. You. But I mean, you identify it? I consider myself British now, but I will say that his father is. To be fair, I am mixed race, by the way. Yeah, yeah. My father is um, European, and my mother is African. So that's why I'm not completely jacked off black. So, but your mother must be really, really proud, though. Your mother and your father. It's a really interesting perspective. They were like, I know you all think that we want to have your form of democracy and your form of life, but actually, we're fine, thanks. Absolutely, because it's a failed society and it's godless. I think it's disgusting. We leave our old people to rot in old people's homes, and then we sit. <laughs> Bro, Andrew, every time he starts speaking, he's, he's it's like he's about to fight somebody, man. Like, relax a little bit. He puts so much energy in everything that he <laughs> that he says. Sit there and say we don't have enough money for nurses. I understand this nurse strike very well and how frustrating it can be if you walk into a hospital and the nurse is not prepared to work. But the nurses would be prepared to work at the current wage if they believed this country was spending its money prudently. When you see this country spending its money and just absolutely wasting it, pulling out of thin air to fund proxy wars, God knows where that has nothing to do with them. Of course, as a nurse, you're going to stand up and say, well, can't I get a pay rise? This country has failed on every metric. And especially our major cities. I, I've just come to London now. I made it very clear to my private jet pilot. I said, fuel the jet and leave it running. Oh, the second I'm finished talking to I'm leaving this cesspit. It's disgusting. <laughs> uh, there's something called choice of words. My man has none of it. <laughs> he spews whatever the hell this country, the first thing that pops London in his head. 10 years ago was one of the most He may be right, but damn, now he is saying. around safely with a watch on. And you're a full-grown man. You're a full-grown adult. When's the last time there's been a serious problem in your life that you completely ignored and it fixed itself? I've talked for I live in months. Portugal, I so I really don't know on in one of none of this, by Instagram the way. Pages in public, a, a, a public comment. And it was very specific about what this person was going to do. Yeah. I couldn't use the police to evade him. We, we know where you live. We're going to come and kill you. And then a second one threatening uh, my son and his mo- mother, my ex-wife. I called in the police. I thought, I'm not having them putting death threats on my son's Sure. I called the police. Yeah. Police investigated this. They arrested somebody over a year ago. And then I heard from the police this week that despite 18 months of investigation, of a publicly posted comment on Instagram threatening to kill me uh, on my son's Instagram, that they ha- will not be able to pursue the case. Now, and I thought, imagine, I'm high profile. This was a front page of the Sun newspaper. Wait, wait, wait. But to be fair, I think they stopped it because it is social media. And let me be honest, Andrew Tate is the first person that could tell you, like, I got death threats. Like, I have a whole Bible list of death threats. Maybe the police didn't do anything because it is the Internet. So a lot of people say stupid crap. Like, if you go into a video game, Call of Duty, like, people will say they will kill you. They will find you and they whatever the hell. It's the internet. Like, people are really emotional. Let's say that. Depending on actually the third. Like, if the guy literally put your address in the comment and then said he's coming for you. And it's actually true and everything. And then you block it. The comment, obviously, as fast as possible so that people don't see the address. But if that happens, then the police actually act upon it. Now, if the person just sends you a death threat on Instagram or any social media, maybe don't take that too seriously. <laughs> maybe, because you never know. Wait, if story. that same man called a transgender person the wrong pronouns, he would be in trouble. Right. So doesn't it just show oh, how absolutely yeah. asinine and banal our legal system has become? Oh, that would yeah, never yeah, happen yeah, yeah. In a country yeah. like United Arab, yeah, United yeah. Arab Emirates. Now I know what, what he means. Dubai, yeah, where the leadership yeah. has common sense. And I'm saying that all the leadership structures. Doesn't... True, 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 true. If that person, if the same person that sent a death threat said something about another gender or whatever the hell 
something now the social like something from lgbtq he will get roasted by every single person in the comment section but because he's in a death threat probably just five people just say something and then a thousand people say for the guy that says something to the lgbtq uh, labor or conservative across hey, all of it in this nation hey. have completely and utterly failed sadiq khan is a loser oh boy because when you have a city which is losing which, which London is, is losing in all, very, in all metrics across its competitive cities around the world, and you're in charge of it, by extension, you're a loser. I will tell you right now, instead of virtue signaling and giving Qatar a hard time over their religious beliefs, what we should be doing is a treaty with Qatar to build a prison deep in the desert. Give me, make me mayor of London. We'll make a prison deep in the desert, and if you're caught with a knife or robbing someone, you can go do 25 years with one meal a day. In the <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Andrew. <laughs> well to be fair he's not he's not saying something crazy to be honest with you like everything that he's saying is, is not crazy people in africa would do worse. <laughs> actually people yeah 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 Ugh. like in africa you still like back in my day right right now they don't do that anymore <laughs> i think <laughs> i think and i hope but back then if you steal, it doesn't matter what you stole. If you steal, the worst thing that can happen to you is get caught by, <laughs> by anybody in the village, okay? Yeah, village, not city, or town, or yeah, I can say town, yeah. <laughs> if you get caught by any person, boy, you better wish the police catches you. Because if the people, oh my God, like they will do you the worst. You would wish death upon yourself. There's people that get their hands cut off by a butcher knife or like those katanas, not katanas, like a mesh. I know in, I know in Portuguese, uh, but I don't know in uh, English, but machados, uh, like they literally cut your hand for actually stealing that that's not the police who does that the, the police takes you to the jail the people <laughs> do be doing that like there was one time that i also saw like a guy um i don't know what they did to his hand or to his face they broke the, the guy completely like and i was a kid by the way i saw a lot of crap happening on my town uh, guns everything just shots firing people dying in the scorching sun and then what we'll do is we'll put cameras there and we'll interview you once a week and broadcast that out to the nation and see if you change your mind and make people understand that this is a country that should be respected and our laws should be respected instead what happens what has Sadiq or any of the people in charge of this country actually done to fix any of our issues brutal. besides sit around and talk nothing none of them have done anything but they seem ultra concerned with finding money for proxy wars ultra concerned with rainbow flags in another country that is uninterested in them and their priorities are completely messed up of course the ambulance people are of course the ambulance drivers are striking. Of course the nurses are striking. Nobody cares about the most important things in this nation. It's Wait, nurses and obviously I don't know what's going on on the on, on their country. Like I'm more focused on my country. I, I already have my problems, okay? Let, not let me focus on other countries' problems. But nurses are striking? That is a huge you worldly nationally that that is unthinkable problems, okay? Not even in Africa we strike. Well, no, we don't actually. Yeah, not even in like hospitals or anything. They went on. They go on strike. Okay, the doctors are going on strike. Nurses are going on strike. Your funds should be on point when it comes to these. Uh, when it comes to these places, okay. What are you doing? If they're going like if nurses and doctors are not getting paid, my dude, what about the specific nobody's case? getting paid. <laughs> OK, let that. me tell you uh, that nobody's getting paid. This country is in big trouble. And I do think that one of the problems is people think if they do have a crime against them, nobody cares anymore. I right? know. I know nobody cares. I can. I have specific examples and people who I know personally. Absolutely and utterly nobody cares. I was in Harrods yesterday and someone tried to rob someone's watch in the middle of the store. I walk what? around with six full grown. I have a security team of six full grown men. Plus me and my brother, eight 
military age males all over 110 kilos, big men, <laughs> just so I can walk around this city. It's absolutely unacceptable. And if you're a dislikable person, you can't just instantly stand up and say it's because of my skin color. It might because, be because of your actions and some of the things you've said. I mean, I think it's probably no doubt she's had racism on social media because it's... Who a hasn't, it's a, it's a cess You <laughs> probably have. Well, I, I, I said just now, I've had death threats <laughs> on social media. No, no, one, no one seemed to care very much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's probably inarguable. My issue with what they've both been doing is if you're going to make allegations against an institution like the Royal Family... I don't know what they're talking about, by the way. But provide some I'm evidence. all for it. You can't it. just spray gun this thing out there and say, well, somebody was racist. Yeah, and airing dirty laundry is never going to be respected by... The somebody was racist. Why is everything has to do with racism? And like, I think the problem with the modern world we're living in is a lot Even of in Africa, we don't talk about racism. Time. It doesn't matter what the tradition is. Most of them are being eroded. They're white, something like the yellow, British, everything. Family, which has been around for a very long time. Yeah, age -old tradition. Africa, one we don't mention racism. Together, one of the last things we have to sit Even though there's white, black, there's like variety, we don't mention racism in Africa. Paint a, a Not South Africa. South Africa goes crazy, okay? <laughs> South Africa way. goes crazy when it comes say, to racism. I've done things to upset people, but it's nothing to do with what I've done. It's purely because of my skin color. Also, it's kind of ironic that she's doing that because she's not particularly dark skinned. It's kind of funny to sit here, sit here, sit here, I mean, look, watch I, her sit and say, yeah, I, race, race, I, race. I think the truth is, I don't know what. Look, you can say that. I can't. Um, the, the reality of it is, I just don't know what the specifics of the racism she says she's had because we've not seen. Any evidence? The universe is a funny place, Piers. If you're looking for something, Wait. you're going to find it. Right? Isn't she when white? I got cancelled, when they attacked me oh, unfairly, what, what lied about doing? me across the entire mainstream media, deleted me from social media so I couldn't defend myself and lied about me repeatedly, I could have stood up and said, it's because I'm brown. I didn't do that. I sat <laughs> and said, okay, there's people who misunderstand my message. My yeah. message is a, is a positive one. People misunderstand That's me. literally Let me self the and understand first that, yes, card that people put out. Yeah, it's because it's the wrong way. Perhaps no. this was misunderstood. Perhaps people don't understand this. I could have just copped out and could have just been refusing to self-reflect on any level and said, it's because I'm brown, that's why they did it. But that's not the mature way to be as an adult. Perhaps Jeremy Clarkson is, is too famous and too well-renowned to say those kind of things, but there's a lot of people who genuinely feel that way, and that's why he said it. And this is what happens when you attack age-old institutions in any country. Should he have ap apologized? That's a good question. It looks like he did. Personally, I think as a man, you should stand up, say what you mean, mean what you say. I don't think you should ever apologize for anything you've ever said. Even me. What, if you, what if you say something truly... Whoa, 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 whoa. Andrew, calm down now. <laughs> Andrew, calm down now. I was following you a hundred percent. Never apologize for what you say. Uh let me let me let you finish. Then if, if it was, very offensive and you actually do regret it. If you truly regret it, then yeah, okay, you can apologize. Uh there we go. Yeah, there we go. I didn't need to explain crap. See? He knows what he says. But if at there the time go. you meant it, then the best thing you can do is say, look. I have just changed my mind. I no longer feel that way. But at the time, that's how I felt. And I'm the person who stands, says what he feels. And that's what I felt at the time. And I apologize that offended you. Andrew Tate, we'll be back with you after the break. We'll talk to you about Twitter yeah. again. See, uh, Elon Musk you just need to give time for the person to explain their thought. You like you hear there, some you messed up stuff. That you're only one false move like at the you. first for second, example, you just stop the video. And then I was about to do that. But then I realized, okay, no, let me let him finish and then give his thought also process a line of his across own the and I will understand a lot better. Band. Kanye West was reinstated, then See? banned again. Wait, what? Genghis Khan had endless women and 200 children as a reward for conquest, he tweeted. I'm the most searched man on the planet. I've conquered Earth. I'm the highest status male on the planet. Females do not expect loyalty from me. They only expect that of lesser men. Then there was this. Imagine having less than 10 children because you're a... <clears throat> See, this is... <laughs> Like, he has no reason to be tweeting this. <laughs> Why would he tweet this? Failures. Besides... Funny, if a girl follows me and she's hot and I see a single picture of her in a private jet, it's block. Women can't afford jets. Women are all brokies. Why are you flying around on some man's jet? You should have been a virgin when I met you. Haram. All right, Andrew Tate. Now, you're, you're getting very near the knuckle with some of those tweets. Am I? You tell me. <laughs> I don't think so. I think people can understand they're semi-satirical. I think people can understand. Do you mean them as jokes or do you mean them? It's not that I don't mean them as jokes. I mean, they're a overall public commentary and observation. I do mean what I say. If I were to see a girl on a private plane on Instagram, for example, I would assume that a man put her on that private plane. I would not assume she bought it herself. What if it was... Perhaps Ari that makes me misogynistic. What if it was Ariana Grande or Beyonce? Well, that's slightly different, isn't it? Why? Because they're famous and very <laughs> they're rich. Women? 
Yeah, of course, and they're famous and very rich. But so if there I, are lots of women you saw, wouldn't think that if well, you actually saw them on a private jet. Well, if I saw a 19-year-old girl from Moldova where the average wage is $200 a month and she was on a private jet, <laughs> I would assume that with the balance of probability... $200 a month? It's very likely because of the movie a man has put her on that private plane. Yes, if that makes me misogynistic instead of just perspicacious enough to understand how the world works, so be it. I'm a realist. Should you be such a generalist about these things? Well, you have to be a generalist when you're looking for in the balance of probability. Well, to be fair, yes, when it comes to what they say probabilities, but it's more about the majority. We count not as an individual, but as a collective, right? So as a collective, we go for the majority. So the majority is what we will count and is what we will actually estimate. What he's saying is true for the majority. So I will say in a more brighter way for the majority, because if we were to, to look at like if there is only 1% of males that are making like six figures, what do you think is the percentage of women? I can't even comprehend the percentages actually. I, I, I don't even know. Like you can literally count the women that actually is making six figures or more. He is not wrong. But should you generalize? Well, to be fair, we do say the majority. So if they have a private jet and all of that, they will be mad because Andrew Chase said that. But at that point, it's like, you are the exception, not, yeah, you are the exception. Please, and try to find balance in the world. You have to be a generalist. In general, if I stroke a lion, it's going to bite my hand. In general, there might be a nice one, but I don't want to find out. So that's how <laughs> you've praised the Taliban. <laughs> Would you do so again tonight? The world is not black and white, the world is gray. It's very difficult to sit and make black and white assumptions about anything. To sit and yeah, say that the Taliban are completely exactly. and utterly evil and we're completely and utterly good as you just discussed with the moral high ground. I believe that the Taliban bring law and order. It may not be the law and order we like, but it's a form of law and order, and humans tra usually gravitate towards... What about towards their treatment of women? I mean, only, well, tonight is, only tonight they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists to go and teach them a lesson. The feminists are so tough, and they stand up and say they can do anything a man can do. Let's arm them up and send them to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah, but it's... <laughs> Oh, God. Look at his face. America left. They left the power vacuum, and the power vacuum is now full. Well, I don't disagree with that. Okay. Well, but I, do we think, I do think the banning of women from university in Afghanistan is utterly horrific. And I think the feminists are going to arm themselves. Look, I, I know what Andrew is doing, okay? And he's... I was about to say he's right, but not about this, okay? Calm down. Well, to be fair, he's not that. <laughs> See, it's so hard to say something we are only half of the video but i'm gonna edit the crap out of this obviously andrew agrees with pierce okay he literally he agrees with pierce he just doesn't want to admit because of the feminist movement okay the feminist movement is going crazy they always say they they can do the same thing or better they actually they always said that they can do things better than men so andrew is basically throwing them uh, <laughs> they, they're throwing them in in the wind okay in a whim right now but he does agree that man women losing education and all that is actually a bad thing i do know that andrew agrees with that part that with that part uh, no doubt about it but he's not gonna say it <laughs> they're gonna show us that they can do anything a man can do they're because a feminist that that's why he's not gonna say why can't you just say on that is you know what it's completely wrong because it's not my point it's i don't understand it makes, me, it makes me think it'll make your critics think that you don't think it's wrong. They could ban all men. They could ban all short people. But they're people. not. They're only banning women. Correct. They could ban all short people. They could ban all people with long hair. And it None of it's anything to do with me. So they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to go to war with the Taliban. But you've just literally spent an impassioned first segment comparing the way, for example, Dubai... <laughs> Yo, Pierce. Law and order. He right? does so not want to take part. Correct. So you do express... Why? Because he wants to... Laws. Absolutely. Both he places. wants to make all law, feminists... He bans women from being educated. Angry. It's not, why is it a problem for you to He's say- He's trying to use no, that, wrong. this argument as a weapon to for them. Dubai, but he agrees with you, Pierce. Experience. I can give my personal opinion. But Pierce opinion, wants but him like to said, say- it has absolutely nothing to do with me with what the Taliban decide to do inside of Afghanistan. And if they decide that's the most- Pierce knows what he's doing. Society, that's why he's trying to convince him choices. to say- We can either go over there and start another war that we shouldn't be involved in and waste a bunch of life. Or we can sit and say, it's up to them. They should govern themselves. They're people. We're no better than them. And they've decided to live their lives a particular way. And that's how they're going to live it. Like I said, if feminists are very upset and they're very disgusted by the fact that in Afghanistan, women cannot go to school. I've been told repeatedly by feminists that they're just as capable as men in all realms. And 
I expect them to arm themselves and fly over to Afghanistan. <laughs> Well, here's what you said. ISIS are the real Muslims, because ISIS do exactly what the book says. Kill everyone who's not a Muslim and chop people's heads off and set them on fire and be raging lunatics. But all the other Muslims go, they're not real Muslims because I read the book, and ignore those parts. Well, then you're not an effing Muslim because you're ignoring the effing book. That particular video was once again satirical. A lot of people watching this would not have seen it. They would not have seen the joke element of it. It's fine. It, that was fine. a joke. It's not funny. Though, no, it? well, yeah, no, it's exactly. Like that was a joke. In our first interview with me, things brother, context, <laughs> form, et cetera, et cetera. But all in all, you could say the same things about Christians. If you were to read the Old Testament and say stick to the Old Testament, you'd kill anyone who works on a Sunday. So it, it, it's not applicable. To could that be a joke? Talk to you after the break about masculinity. Why is it that so many young men gravitate to you? What is your view of what it takes to be a man? Oh boy, to this, this is going to be cooking. And, and I already one. recorded so for 45 Ash, minutes and we are literally half away. My God. Uh, let's be this uh, uh, lively contributor Christ. to this program. What is I'm, your view of women? I'm a realist. What I'm, is your real view of women? I absolutely not really love women. I adore women. I have good relationships with women. Not a single woman has come up to me on the street since I've been canceled. Not a single one has said anything negative. Every single one of them has said positive things. You're a traditional male. I wish more men were like you. You understand your masculine roles. You understand what you're supposed to do. You understand you're supposed to protect women. You're exactly the kind of man I'd be looking for. I've never had a negative interaction with a female ever since I've been dubbed the biggest misogynist Where in the world. To be fair, all these women don't live in the internet. You know what's the biggest problem? Internet. That's what it is. What is my opinion? Stop going to the internet. Please. But before you actually do, subscribe. Please let me finish. I'm sorry, sorry, Pierce. Also, there's not been a single woman who's accused me of a crime, not a single woman who's accused me of rape, not a single woman who's come out and said anything from my the entire rape, past that 36 is crazy. years I've done anything wrong ever. Anybody else with my level of fame, any footballer, any other movie star, at least has people who've come out and accused them of rape, X, Y, Z. I have no woman who's come out and ever said I've hurt her. No woman who's come out and ever said I've done damage to her or been horrible to her. Everybody who ever interacted with me has said I've been a nice person. All of them. Here's so this okay. random Twitter nobody who seems to know so much it's full of... All right, you, you've responded to her yeah. tweet. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's, where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with. I think a lot of women like men to be masculine, and, yeah. and what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask I haven't you talked is to it, one that... are engaged in that debate with... Men <laughs> said the same time. thing to me. Where is Not the line towards me, because she's cross, my friend. The behavior but she was talking about men... Man. Please define toxic masculinity. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line I'll that later. from being a masculine good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine where did, men. Where did you get your views about this from? Just what I grew up with. It's the family I grew up around. And your the, father, and, your mother, yeah, both? And, and the Pierce, go to Africa. <laughs> to be fair, I won't say like every African person is like this. Obviously not. But we grew up with a specific education, right? And the traditional uh, way of a man and a woman living is literally almost a hundred percent of nowadays it's like 80 percent 80 percent 80 90 percent which is like the traditional the guy provides literally everything like in my family that's how it is they have some of my some of my uh, uncles my aunties uh do have quite a lot of money in terms of like work and everything but that's because of our grandfather which is our grandfather is just the epitome of freaking richness so he's pretty good so yeah his children got rich as well from from it so that's why the women are also rich due to that process and um but in terms of like masculinity and all that like that doesn't ex well it's like nothing exists in africa because we don't label nothing right we don't label oh that's masculinity or oh, that's feminist we don't label nothing it's just you. <laughs> you are like that. Like, if you do something stupid or whatever the hell, it's because of your actions. Okay? We blame on your actions and you blame on what you have here or whatever the hell. But we don't label nothing. 
because once you start to label something you start to concentrate on that like let's say yeah you have autism or what what is it or hdd i can't concentrate this too much oh that's because i have hdd oh, okay okay no problem then you will be so freaking chill you won't even work as hard as you should should be yeah you do the have hdd still in, but a lot of the things like I'm you have to work out twice as hard as another a normal person but you will still succeed completely normal that's what accepted by that's how we view years life years and how we actually accomplish a lot say a man should protect a woman now gets to be called a misogynist and canceled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is, everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Think they'd go themselves? Are they going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a... The problem with Andrew, the reason why people like him so much, well, the people, the reason why people listen to him so much is the way that he speaks in general. Like, who talks like this? <laughs> well, to be fair, in a normal conversation, I already saw him speaking and he doesn't speak with this much intensity and he does have pauses. Right now, he doesn't seem like he has pauses or even breathes, so... My man. Superhero, if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good hearted and God fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dame Sheila Hancock says we've become too over emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Yes. You got a point? She's completely yes. right. And the dangerous thing yes. about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. Yes. They're genuinely dangerous. This is To be fair, I can't talk too much about that point. <laughs> because again, I come from Africa. Sorry for bashing the obvious, but uh, we are really different in terms of, you know, our point of views and all of that. Like we we really are a lot different. So I can't even say too much about Yo, you guys are too sensitive and all that. Like, I'm coming from another country, so I, I can't put my view upon you guys. I can't do that, okay? Even though I believe that you guys are sensitive like as crap, but I still can't say, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not living there. I, I don't know the struggles. Actually, look, unless you are, you know, I'm not going to say anything. It's crazy. All these but you talk are about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty, yeah. not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. Yeah. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get <laughs> rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are that is that is true though that that is actually true if you do teach people to act upon their emotions that is the worst thing ever like there's discipline there's something called discipline mate discipline <laughs> everybody needs discipline even your dogs needs discipline okay one thing is a woman acting upon her emotions that's one thing a man acting upon these emotions oh they're already violent they're going to get even more violent. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely notly wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely notly wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You need to suck it up and perform yeah. anyway. Not to sit there and cry your eyes out or blame other people. Tough or being a woman out. too. Yeah, it? don't blame people. It's certainly tough. That's really bad. I'm not don't a blame woman, people. so why would I speak on issues I do not understand? I'm a man. You can feel empathy. <laughs> for them. I feel empathy, certainly, but I do not understand their issues. See, a lot I, of men come up to me and they admire you. I've got to say, a lot of women... I've spoken to don't admire. They think you represent misogyny. They think when they hear you not commit to saying the Taliban shouldn't be banning women from university education, well, why can't he just say that's wrong? Well, firstly, that's not my experience. I experienced the absolute... <laughs> he won't say experience. it. Haven't that's you ever true. thought that when you look at a yacht in Dubai... You're running out of time. Oh. Stop stalling. I know what it's you're fine. doing. I'll just take your... Oh, God! 
I'll stake your queen. Damn it. I was trying to give you a little speech there. You didn't want to listen to me. <laughs> I can tell you when you see a yacht in Dubai, the girl just gets an Instagram invite, gets to jump right on board. So listen, how much are you worth? Yeah. I'm a billionaire by now. Dollars or pounds? About dollars. We're not in pounds yet, but All we'll right. get there soon. So what to do? Yeah, we have a, a little bit of work to do. But and finally, I know you don't know anything about football and care even less, but greatest of all time, Ronaldo. A billionaire now. I would understand if he is a billionaire, but I don't know what does he sell besides this course and besides the actual views and all of that that he's getting from YouTube and all that. There's more stuff on, on the background, obviously. Otherwise, where the hell were these billions coming from? Okay. YouTube, your course ain't giving you a billion. On the period of time that you have been on these platforms, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. On the period of time that you were famous and all that, that doesn't give you a billion. Otherwise, Mr. Beast would also be a, a multi-billionaire by this point. Just because of the views and everything. Like, the accumulation of views that Mr. Beast has is more than Andrew Tate the accumulative like Andrew Tate is going crazy but Mr. Beast is well Mr. Beast is Mr. Beast <laughs> but yeah this was uh informative and uh God blessing too long so I'll see you guys in the next video now Merry Christmas